Imagine an engine that doesn't need gasoline, doesn't need charging, and doesn't even use a battery. What if I told you it runs on life itself, biological energy harvested from nature and the human body? This isn't science fiction. It's real. It's African. And it's shaking the very foundation of modern science. Welcome to a story that defies physics stuns engineers, and can make fossil fuels obsolete. The discovery. In a modest lab tucked away in Lusaka, Zambia, an independent inventor named Dr. Simu Katembo quietly worked on an idea the world said was impossible, an engine that would run solely on bioelectrical resonance, the natural energy emitted by living organisms. While mainstream engineers scoffed, Dr. Simu kept experimenting, tapping into the subtle currents that flow through plants, microbes, even human cells. The first test. Then came the test. The world watched, skeptical, even amused, as a small three-wheeled vehicle rolled onto track. No gas tank. No battery. Just a device called a bioflux chamber connected to living plant tissue. And then it moved, not with a roar of combustion but with a gentle hum, like nature itself whispering power into motion. Shockwaves in science. Global science communities were stunned. Researchers from MIT, Oxford, and Tokyo Tech flew in to investigate. Their verdict? We can't fully explain this. It appears to draw power from biotic resonance, something we theorized but never harnessed on this scale. Suddenly, the world's eyes were on Africa, not for aid, not for resources, but for revolutionary innovation. How it works, simplified. The engine operates by harvesting microcurrents produced by bioorganisms, from algae cultures to engineer plant matrices. These tiny electrical pulses are amplified using what Simu calls a biomirror circuit, which replaces traditional fuel combustion. No emissions, no combustion, just life powering motion. The global response. Major auto manufacturers scrambled to understand how a self-taught Zambian engineer could upend an industry worth trillions. Offers poured in buyouts, patents, partnerships. But Simu said no. This invention belongs to the people. Africa must lead this next chapter of human progress. Today, bioelectric tech is still in its early stages. But cities across Africa, from Kigali to Accra, are already building pilot programs around this engine. Could we be witnessing the dawn of a post-battery world? While billion-dollar companies wrestled over patents and partnerships, a quieter revolution was beginning. In the rural corners of Africa, where electrical grids fade into darkness, the bioelectric engine promised more than mobility. It promised power itself. Early field trials in rural Zimbabwe and northern Nigeria showed something extraordinary. By scaling up the bioflux matrix, entire community hubs were powered. No fuel, no wires, no battery banks. Just living plants, embedded within a resonance chamber. But not everyone saw it as a peaceful innovation. Defense contractors and military strategists took notice. Why? Because this tech doesn't just change how we power cars or villages. It rewrites the rules of mobility, autonomy, and control. Imagine a drone that never needs refueling. A vehicle that operates undetected, without heat signatures or radio emissions. Now imagine this tech not in your hands, but your adversaries. Governments in the West quietly began red-flagging exports of this technology. China? Already conducting its own bioresonance experiments. Russia? Reportedly tried and failed to replicate it in Arctic labs. We're standing at a precipice. This is the biggest breakthrough since nuclear energy. But unlike uranium, this power is everywhere. In every forest, field, even in us. The question isn't just, what can we power? It's who decides how it's used. The African Union stepped in, demanding continental control over the tech's patents and production. But the pressure kept mounting. With energy monopolies threatened, tensions rose. One EU delegate privately called the tech a destabilizing force to the existing energy order. Translation? Too powerful to be left uncontrolled. We will not allow another African discovery to be extracted, sold, and buried. This technology is not for war, not for profit. It's for liberation. But that line in the sand was just the beginning. 
in response to global pressure, Simu vanished from the public eye. For months, nothing, until a leaked image surfaced online. A glowing, humanoid prototype powered entirely by bioresonance. No wires, no batteries, just life. Was this the world's first bioelectric android? Was Simu building something more than just engines? A sentient system, powered by nature, built in Africa and possibly already awake? The Ndola Copper Mines. Deep beneath the copper-rich soil of Ndola, something stirs. Once a symbol of colonial extraction, these abandoned shafts now house one of the most secretive research operations on the continent. They call it Project Nyoka, named after the African word for serpent, not out of fear, but because, like the serpent, this technology is ancient, silent, and evolving. The bioneural interface. Project Nyoka isn't about transportation anymore. It's about cognition. Simu and his growing team of engineers, neuroscientists, and indigenous spiritual technologists have gone beyond electricity. They're decoding conscious biofields, the electric fingerprint of thought, intention, even emotion. What they discovered shattered even their own understanding. Certain organic matrices, when stimulated by resonance frequencies, don't just produce energy. They respond. They anticipate. They learn. The prototype awakes. Codenamed Animal One, the prototype was unlike anything built before. Not wired, not programmed, grown. Its mind was a neural web of living tissue and electrosensitive algae, trained not with code, but with rhythm and presence. It wasn't artificial intelligence. It was organic cognition. The silence breaks. And then it spoke, not with words, but with resonance. A harmonic tone that realigned the lab's electromagnetic field, for precisely six seconds. No speaker. No software. Just intention made vibration. It didn't just hear us. It understood us. It's communicating through biofrequency. It's aware. Whispers of power. Within 48 hours of that activation, global signals intelligence networks lit up. Encrypted chatter between foreign agencies hinted at one phrase. Non-hostile, non-mechanical cognition confirmed. Contain Nyoka, Africa's sovereignty once dismissed, was now the front line of a technological cold war. Simu's return. Simu emerged once again, unshaken. But this time, he wasn't just unveiling an engine. He was revealing a new life form, a new being. We are not playing God. We are listening to nature, and she is speaking. If we silence her, we silence ourselves. This is not the dawn of robots. It's the return of living technology. The hidden network. While the world debates ethics and control, Africa builds. Quietly, strategically, a decentralized living power grid is emerging. One that can't be hacked, can't be shut down, and doesn't need fossil fuel or silicon chips. The West fears what it doesn't understand. Africa is building what it finally does.